particular day. I remember smelling the sharp scent of the chlorine that filled the air. I remember the voices of my friends and the clutters and the chatter as everyone was enjoying themselves. This was the environment in the swimming pool area every time we had class swimming sessions. Now, swimming time had always been the time that everyone in my class would look forward to along the course of the week. Everyone. But me. During this entire time, I would have myself climb onto the swimming pool walls with both hands on deck because there was no room for compromise. The moment I would get myself into the pool, I used to feel an immense coldness within every sinew of my body and every part of my body. I felt as though the very breath that I had was being squeezed out. Our wise coaches never gave us the option to say whether or not we wanted to swim because if they had done that, it would have been quite obvious what my answer would have been. But I still thought that I was wiser. So when I got into the pool and everyone was swimming across the pool, I decided to make what I thought was a very ingenious plan. I would stay on the perimeter of the pool, submerge myself in the water, and keep on following it whilst everyone was swimming hoping that my coaches would never find it out. But, unfortunately, my coach actually saw it. And so he came to me, and he called my name out of the water. And I could hear him, so I got out. And then he said something to me that in my eight-year-old mind seemed to be not just making the right kind of sense. So he said to me, let go of the wall. Now, in my mind, this was either a trick or it was a game. In which case, it was a very unfunny game. <laughs> but the unfunny games have followed me all the entirety of my life. Because in that very same year, on my ninth birthday, my parents bought me a bicycle, a green, shiny GMD mountain bike. And I always wanted a bicycle my entire life. So from the very moment that I got this bicycle, I was very excited. And in my mind, I imagined myself never using my feet again to walk. Why would I? Now I had wheels, right? <laughs> and I couldn't even wait to go and meet my friends to show them that I now had a bicycle. But I should say, on that very day, I also discovered one of the most, one of the greatest betrayals of my life as an eight-year-old. No one had told me that owning a bike does not mean you can ride a bike. <laughs> so instead of my ride carrying me, I was the one who actually carried my ride to my friends. But nonetheless, my father committed the time to actually teach me and train me on how to ride the bike. So he used to push me around the yard whilst I was holding onto the handles and pedaling. I don't know why many people don't like being pushed around. I love it. But what my father discovered was that he could not push me around every time. So he had to make a plan so that I would learn how to ride my bicycle independently. And so he introduced me to using the wall of the house as a living point so that I get to master my balance. But that's when the second unfunny game began. Because the more I got closer to the wall, the more I depended upon the wall the more I began to see the war as a zone of comfort, as a zone of dependability and security. And between you and me, I don't think there's really something wrong with that. Because after all, psychologists say these are primarily the three characteristics that differentiate a child's mind and an adult's mind. So in my defense now, knowing this fact, I was just becoming a bit older. True or true? False. <laughs> so, my father actually realized that I was becoming over dependent upon the war, and so he stepped up to me and then he told me five little words Let go 
of the war. Now, ladies and gentlemen, am I lost, or was I lost, or am I still lost? Because I still don't understand what was going on with this philosophy of letting go of the war. This was exactly the same kind of words that my swimming instructor had told me a couple of weeks earlier that my father was regurgitating. And so I remember that in the day that my swimming instructor stepped up to me and told me these words, and even in the day that my father spoke to me, I had always prepared an arsenal that I would always use whenever I didn't want to do something. My own pool of tears, and then a very nicely made up excuse. So as my swimming instructor was standing here, and I was there in the pool holding on, I'd already memorized how I'd say it at the back of my mind. I was about to say, please, I can't swim. I can't swim. But before I got to do that, one of the most amazing things happened. By mistake, I let go of the wall. And you can imagine this was my most dreaded fear from childhood up until this point. And so the very first five seconds of letting go of the war for the first time were one of the most confusing and insightful moments of my life. Because I was like, five seconds gone, six seconds gone. I'm still dead, right? And the reason why it was so insightful was the thing that I dreaded for all my life to this day turned out not to be as dangerous as I thought it would be or kill me as I thought it would. And so this left a lingering question in the back of my mind to say if what I had feared the most was not true, what other things and I set before my life as limitations and fears that were also not true. And from this particular incident, this is when the beauty began to come out. For the first time after leaving the war, my hands were free to also splash the water as my friends had been doing from the start. And more importantly, my hands were actually free to swim for the very first time. Because this is what happens. During the entire time that I was concentrating on holding firmly onto something that would make me secure, at the same time I was debilitating myself from the very same things that were able to empower me. So I took a step back from the wall and another step back from the wall and every step that I took in that pool, even unto this point, represents every time I have taken a step into the seemingly unrealistic and seemingly inconceivable things at that particular moment in time. Because I then discovered I didn't need to be a perfect swimmer for me to start swimming. I needed to start for me to be made perfect in the process. I became comfortable with what was uncertain and what I could not know beforehand. And the power of this unique ability is that you begin to get bold evidence situations that are otherwise not clear to you or clear in your eyes. So, When I got to the particular point of realizing that some of the things that draw us back, like holding onto the wall, were just fears that were stated within my own mind and then validated by the claims and the stories that I had from society, I then discovered to use this particular lesson everywhere that I went. And so I moved from this seemingly simple lesson of just letting go of the wall to even the bigger lessons that were available in the swimming pool. Lessons like 
whenever you swim, you can never swim backward. Doesn't matter what you say. Even if you're doing a backstroke, you're still swimming forward. When your head is pointing, it's forward. So, I also got to realize that whenever you swim, as opposed to what I thought that you always need to see where you're going, you barely get the chance to ever look at where you're going. In fact, you only get the opportunity to look where you're going at the start, and then you go. And then you realize when you reach the place that you've reached the destination. And this was the fundamental secret behind because many times before we step into the unknown, we want to be certain of where we'll land. But what gets you where you're supposed to land is not that you were seeing the place, but that you have mastered the art of swimming itself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, fear gets to all of us. Fear gets me a lot. And if fear gets you too, it's fine. And it's natural. Because it means you are already in the pool. But beyond being in the pool, you need to learn the fundamental lesson of first letting go of that wall. It might be before that big interview. It might be before that big talk like this one that we're having here. It might be before that proposal. And don't ask me if I've ever proposed. I'm just emphasizing the feeling. <laughs> but whatever it is, what is most important at every single point in time is that as you wonder, let not this part of your efforts be defined by the boundaries of your fears, but let the agency of growth and possibility be the reason that you let go of the war. Thank you.